Hello, my name is Colossal Hawkins, and for 151's Virtual Parade Night, we'll be looking at giving words of command in drill and how you should conduct yourself in a drill lesson. So let's look at the basics and take a look at the aim of drill. The aim of drill is to produce a soldier who's proud, alert, and obedient, and provide the basis of teamwork and engender collective discipline. It isn't and shouldn't be used as a form of punishment, since all they do is make the cadet dislike you, and it won't help uphold the aim of drill, since they won't be proud of what they're doing, they won't have anyone else to work with, so it'll fail at being teamwork, and they probably won't be obedient after punishment anyway. When taking drill, you should always keep the aim in the back of your mind at all time and try and uphold it when possible. How you can do this is set a high standard for yourself and for the cadets. So they're proud of what they're doing and they're working together to achieve that standard. Also, do drill together. There's no point in having them march up and down the parade square and have you sit on the side in a chair with a nice refreshing drink. March with them and give them pointers when need be. Tell them where they're wrong and sometimes praise them when they're right. Also, be an example. This includes your kit as well. Make sure you're well turned out and make sure your drill is on point. The motto of the ACF is to aspire to achieve. So inspire the cadets to achieve what you can do. Now we're going to look at how you compose yourself during drill and what kind of words you should be using. So you should be using short, precise words which convey the speed of good drill. For example, strike, force and grip. This gives the cadet a good impression about the movement that is to be accompanied with the explanation. That should be considered precisely and with good control. But also remember, actions not words. There's no point in giving a nice explanation about how you're going to strike the weapon with a force to get a good grip and then have the cadets not have no idea what you're talking about. Any good explanation, always make sure you follow up with a nice demonstration as well. Drew is exacting and to teach successfully, you must have patience and not lose your temper. There's no point in losing your temper in the middle of a drill lesson and throwing a cane, a pay stick, a stick, a cadet over the parade square. If a cadet can't do something for the 50th time and you're starting to feel a bit annoyed with them, either move on and do something different for another, for example, another drill movement, or get an NCO or a senior cadet to take them to the side and just do a bit of one-on-one. -on -one. You must also be enthusiastic in order to inspire your squad with a will to learn. If you're standing up there completely bored and disinterested, the cadet's also going to be bored and disinterested, and thus your lesson will probably be pointless since they will most likely forget it. Or if you go up there completely enthusiastic, even if you don't particularly like drill that much, you'll also install the cadets a nice enthusiasm for the subject and will help with the aim of drill, since they'll be proud about what they're doing and they'll be working together, since they're all enthusiastic about the stuff they're learning. Since you're an example, you must be consistent to give your squad a standard they can aim to achieve and don't deviate from this. This is twofold, your example and your squad's example. There's no point in trying to get a standard of cadets which is the same as, for instance, the guards, because it's not going to happen. Instead, give your squad or carder or whatever kind of unit in, uh, you're drilling in your uh, detachment, give them a standard they can aim to achieve. That is achievable and they know they can do it. This may be the standard of a cadre above them or just a standard of the NCOs. Make sure they can, aim, they can actually achieve it, it's not impossible, and there are examples of them achieving it. Praise them when they get it right, but remember, they mustn't deviate from it. If they start sliding down, then it'll be harder to stop it. So always remember to pick them up whenever they're starting to slack in certain areas. If need be, do a bit of extra in a certain movement if they're starting to slack. Moving on, looking at yourself, um, the example you set to the cadets must also be consistent. Looking, harking back to the aim of drill, um, you must always be an example to your cadets. There's no point in buffing your boots up, ironing your kit, and giving a really good enthusiastic drill lesson one parade night, and the next you turn up in half dressed because you've forgotten your beret. It's not going to set a good example, and the cadets are going to start thinking about whether or not that standard is they want to achieve. So also have humanity, understand the squad's problems, praise readily, but do not become too familiar and never humiliate individual members of the squad. Don't just be a brick wall that talks in front of the cadets because the cadets will just lose interest. Be enthusiastic and interact with the squad as well. Answer questions and um, talk to them if they have troubles with parts of drill or other things, but never become too familiar. If you're friends with some cadets, be friends outside of cadets, but when you come in doing drill or the other lesson for that matter, always make sure you are a standard of NCO. 
Don't ever use first name terms or anything, since if you're familiar with some cadets and not with others, it will also single them out and therefore create an imbalance in the squad. Likewise, don't humiliate individual members of the squad. Drill is meant to uh, encourage teamwork. And if people are on different levels, for instance, one's your best friend and the other is just you humiliated them. You don't particularly like them because they're not very good at drill or whatever, then it's going to create an imbalance and the squad isn't going to progress naturally. And finally, you must always have a personality. As an instructor, you must impress your squad with your personality and always control them fully. Again, like humanity one, don't just be a brick wall that talks. Have something interesting about you that the squad can latch onto and experience. But always make sure you can also control them fully. Don't just be having them letting you walk over. During drill, much like small children, recruits imitate their instructors and it's by your example that they will learn the most. Therefore, when drilling a squad, always stand at attention. When moving, march how you would wish your squad to march. Precisely, uniformly and smartly. When demonstrating, do so accurately and if the movements of the rifle, use it and nothing else. Do not use bad language since you may eventually have an occasion where the cadet starts swearing back at you. If you use bad language from the cadets, then the cadets might think it's acceptable to just use it generally in drill, which obviously it isn't. Be impeccably turned out, pretty self-explanatory there, certain example. Never exaggerate a movement of drill. If you do this, for instance, you exaggerate swinging the arms since your cadets are getting it too low or their arms are bent or whatever, and eventually they get it right, but they've copied your exaggerated movement, and eventually you have a bunch of cadets swing their arms above their head when marching, that's not good. That's not good. Nobody wants that. So now we're going to have a look at the words of command. When commanding a squad, all of your words of command must be powerful and able to be easily recognised. The way you give your words of command dictates how your cadets react to them. If you go up there and you're very quiet and timid, they're going to be confused about whether or not you're actually giving them an order. As well, if you go up there and you're laughing at a friend's joke or talking to someone else while teaching, they're also going to be confused whether or not you're teaching them or if you're just there. However, if you're clear, loud and powerful, but what you're saying is completely unintelligible, the cadets are just going to be confused about what you're asking them to do. Some might turn left, some might turn right, some might saluting, some might sit down and have a cup of tea. All your words of command must be loud, powerful and clear so the cadets can easily understand and they know immediately who's in charge. Looking at the actual words of command themselves, a word of command, for instance a movement order, is divided into three parts. The introductory, this tells the squad what movement they're about to carry out. We'll look at the right turn at the halt for this example. So the introductory would be squad, move to the right in threes or file or whatever. It's the fairly kind of short um, introduction to what they're doing. Next, you have the cautionary, the drawn out and loud reminder to the squad. In our example, this would be the right after that. So squad moves to the right in threes, introductory, and the right would be the right before finally the executive, which is the high pitch sharp command. In our example, this would be turn. And see, the cautionary kind of gives the cadets um, time to process what you said in the introductory period and the executive is a marker from which the cadets since it's short and sharp immediately know precisely the moment they carry out the movement as you can see ICE spells ICE so the acronym ICE is as, is what we've just go, gone over however there's not always an introductory or a cautionary for example when marking time uh, the word command forward to move the cadets off there is no introductory or cautionary, so both of those roles have to be rolled into the executive. So maybe in that time it's not as high pitched and sharp, it's slightly more drawn out to give the cadets a bit more of an idea about when the command's coming and when they should be ready for it. The cautionary word command should be consistently drawn out over the equivalent of about four paces in quick time when marching. So when halting, oh, um, so squad would be the cautionary in squad halt, which should be drawn out over the equivalent of four paces. There should be a pause in it and the executive word of command of at the halt, a regulation pause, and in quick time, about four paces. So thank you for listening to uh, this short video on words command and delivering drill lessons. Hopefully it gives you a good idea and a better 
um, and are better informed when you go back in September and teach Joe again. Goodbye.